Hey everyone, all right, let's jump into this. Uh, we're gonna get sorted. Hopefully for next time, we'll get uh, the ability for me to be able to see everybody. That would be great. But in the meantime, I wanted to introduce myself. My name is Justin Gray. I am the chairman and the founder of Midio.com and Songistry. Um, I'm a songwriter, I'm a record producer. I'm gonna give you a little bit of a brief history of, of who I am. As a songwriter and a record producer, uh, I've worked with some pretty incredible talent, uh, uh, people like Avril Lavigne, people like John Legend. Uh, I've worked with um, Louise Fonsi, uh, Mariah Carey, um, and, uh, and I've also worked on many films uh, and television programs and advertising campaigns. Um, I've worked on Toy Story 4, uh, Lego Movie Ninjago. Uh, currently, if you guys are living in the U.S., I, I for, for the last two and a half years, I've had um, one of the main songs for Target's Run and Done. Uh, I probably do uh, 30 to 40 sync licenses a year uh, just on my own. Uh, and, um, you know, I'm the, you know, I started this company. And so uh, MIDEO stands for Music Data Intelligence In and Out. Uh, before that becomes overwhelming, I just wanted to uh, set a couple of uh, expectations for today. What we're going to do is we're going to go over a very uh, sort of like high level scratch the surface on what Midio is and what it could do for you guys. Uh, I'm going to, from time to time, jump in and talk about some of our other compatible, uh, uh, you know, uh, um, products that we make uh, that you guys all get access to for free. Uh, and although we're just talking strictly about Midio today, uh, you're going to hear me talk about things like Midio Plus. You're going to hear me talk about things like Hyper Audio. And, uh, and uh, you know, we're going to go through all of that. And what I think we're going to do, too, is I'll give you a very high level view of what Midio does. Uh, but then I think we're going to go at, at other points in subsequent learnings, go through, you know, how to just upload songs or how to do very specific elements. Um, we do have a moderator, uh, so if you feel like asking any questions as I'm going down, please do. Just pop them into the chat, and uh, we, uh, we we will we'll do our best to answer them. We're going to spend about 30 minutes going through the platform itself, uh, and then uh, we'll try and spend maybe another 10 or 15 minutes just doing some Q&A. Uh, hopefully, I cover everything, and there's no Q&A, but I'm open, super open to Q&A. I will also put my email address here into the chat, so at any point... Uh, if you guys feel like um, you you have some questions that maybe I didn't cover or you wanted to go through something a little bit more specific, just feel free to hit me. There's my email address. Uh, I'm uh, available. And um, if I don't get back to you right away, just, you know, just ping me again and I'll do my best to get back to you as, as fast as I can. Um, anyway, welcome. Thank you so much. Uh, part of my history as a songwriter was watching other creators, uh, other songwriters, other producers, uh, other artists um, suffer uh, from not being able to monetize their music or not being able to earn uh, from from the from the songs that they write. Part of the impetus to creating Midio was to help solve a major problem that even me as a creator had. The more songs I wrote, the more disorganized I felt. So how did I? How would I? How could I create a, a an environment where I could put my songs? I could tag my collaborators. I can track all my lyrics. Um, and then I can use that to now go back on my mobile device, find a particular song and be able to pitch and share those songs out, you know, create playlists, you know, the same ways that we use uh, things like um, SoundCloud or, or, or iTunes or whatever. But I felt I wanted to have a much more of a, a, a much stronger command of the catalog that I was building for myself. Now, some people write 10 songs a year, some people write 100 songs a year. I happen to write 100 songs a year and my collaborators do too. So the original concept was how do we just create a, a, a platform where I could just park my music, search it and share it? Well, as technology evolved and as the problems of songwriters in the music industry became more and more complex, things like uh, watching uh, Spotify and DSPs and YouTube and, 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 how, and how people are monetizing. Quick side note, I saw a, stat, I saw a statistic that 0.02 of artists that upload music to Spotify earn at least $50,000 a year. That means 99.98% 99 of artists that upload to Spotify basically can't earn a living from it. We know that. Um, 
so we wanted to try and have a platform that allowed and empowered songwriters and creators to find revenue. Now, of course, I know that you guys are all probably well aware of things like music library companies and music publishers. Some of you may be published. Some of you may not. Uh, some of you may not want to or never will be. So our idea was how do we create a platform where we can empower creators on every level to try and monetize their music uh, in a way that feels meaningful, that feels validating to who they are uh, and is very uh, authentic in that process. So as I described the earlier versions and iterations of Midio, what we started to do is realizing the importance of things like metadata. Now you guys might or might not know about metadata. We'll talk about it briefly, but I anticipate that we'll also do another whole webinar series or at least another webinar on uh, metadata and its, and its importance. But basically metadata, very simply, if you don't know, or if you do know, I'll reiterate, is the digital information that is embedded or stored in an audio file. So again, uh, if you speak to even lots of professional songwriters that I work with, you say, how do you, put, how do you embed metadata in your music? They kind of look at you cross-eyed and they kind of don't know what you're talking about. Um, so we've made it very easy. We're gonna go over that and we're gonna I'm gonna show you how that works. Um, so we've embedded that now on top of it, what we've just recently started doing is we have deployed and it's only going to get better, a very cool artificial intelligence or AI component. Every song that gets uploaded to Midio will be analyzed and there's over 10,000 different data points that are applied to every single piece of audio. I'm giving you all this major overview and then I'm going to show you how this all works in platform. How we use the AI, it's not, as I like to say, it's not in an Arnold Schwarzenegger Terminator kind of way. It's in a way that is a tool to empower us creatives, especially if you are writing a lot of songs or you are trying to uh, get more music placed for film and TV or any music placed in film and TV. Uh, this is a great way to, to, to create and automate identifying um, components that allow us to find music quicker and use that to and leverage other songs against ours. Again, let's just, you know what, I'm just gonna jump into it. Um, it's very hard because I'm not, uh, uh, James, can you please allow me to uh, screen share? Um, it makes it uh, very simply stated. We've created a platform that is meant to empower songwriters. Oh, that's me working in the back on Pro Tools. It's me opening up some of my emails. I probably should have done this before you guys. Uh, so logging in is really simple. Um, we're gonna keep this super high level. Um, if you have not created a page, you should. If you have not, please do. Uh, everybody is getting uh, free access to Midio and what is going to be launched as Midio Plus. Uh, James, I'm going to text you to make sure that, can you see my screen? Just text me yes. Uh, I'm sure that we can, but um, we're going to keep it moving. So if you can see my screen here, uh, let's just jump into it. Perfect. Great. So if you can see, here is everybody's basic uh, um, uh, 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 profile page. Sorry. Here's everybody's basic profile page. It's very, by the way, just side note, it's very strange. I can't see anybody's faces. So I really feel like I'm speaking into a vortex here, but here we go. Here's everybody's face uh, profile page. This is where you can do most of your work. You could do 80% of everything you need to do on video. You can go and search and find songs. So for example, let's say I want to find uh, edgy rock songs. I can search edgy rock and I'm going to show you how we find all of these songs. Here comes our edgy rock songs. Okay, now let's say I go, hey, I want edgy rock, but I only want stuff. I'm just going to find something, stuff that I've done with um, Kent. So I'm going to say, I want edgy rock Kent. I'm going to search edgy rock Kent, right? I can keep going down and finding through my whole catalog of 899 songs exactly what I'm looking for. Uh, I'm going to open up this song for a moment here. Let's say I want edgy rock Kent, and I'm going to go backwards here because I want to try and find something with a lyric. Um, and I want something that, uh, let's see, uh, refers to, uh, uh, let's see, breaking. Okay. There's, if you can see here, uh, by the way, again, we're restore lyrics. We'll go through all of this. Um, let's say iced. We'll use the word iced, right? Okay. So let's say I need to now find edgy 
rock music that I wrote with Kent that has the reference to the word iced. I can literally go through my catalog and drill exactly down to the song that I need, right? Let's go backwards here. I'm gonna go back to edgy rock. Okay, so here is all of my edgy rock songs. Uh, I'm, I'm kind of going down the line, but then I'm gonna come back here. Uh, once I go and discover those, I say, I'm gonna pitch that, I'm gonna pitch that, I'm gonna pitch that, I'm gonna pitch, I'm just randomly pitching this. You can see this is track added to pitch list. Here's my pitch list over here. Um, let's leave that parked for a moment. We don't need to go through that just quite yet. What I wanna show you here is, let's go backwards. Here's how we upload a song. You can do it a couple ways. You can do it kind of the old school way. Add track, select tracks, and add your songs accordingly. Or what I prefer doing is, let me just shut this down here, sorry. Uh, what I prefer doing here is I prefer going, uh, hey, I want to, um, let's see here, I'm gonna use uh, this one here. I'm gonna say, I want to upload a uh, new style Right. I'm going to just literally, let's see, where is it? Uh, I'm just literally drag and drop that. By the way, while I'm dragging and dropping that, I'm going to go back to my other page. I'm going to go and open Ready, Set, Let's Go. And I'm going to also drag and drop that as well. Oops. I'm also going to drag and drop that as well. Oh. Give me a moment. We've got to do this. We've got to do them at the same time or separately. My bad. Here we go. I'm going to drag and drop as well. There you go. Um, I can close that. That's all up, uploading and updating in the background. So I can keep doing all of the work that I need to do. You're going to see it's refreshing itself. And now I'm going to open up this song, New Style. This is the song that I just uploaded, right? You're going to see there's almost no information available here. But there is certain information that is already available because this was metadata that was pre-embedded into um, the song when it was uploaded in the first place. But now I want to add all of my information here. First thing I want to do is I want to add my collaborator. So I'm going to click that button. I'm going to go search for Maisie because I wrote the song with her. I'm going to go try and find her. She's not there. What am I going to do? I'm going to go and invite her. Maisie Ollinger. Let me make the Maisie big again. She's a really cool writer. Let me just go find her email address super duper fast. Um, there we go. Um, I'm going to invite her. So I've not just invited Maisie as a collaborator. I've said, I've said confirm. She actually just received an email that you guys don't see, but she just received an email saying, Justin Gray added you as a collaborator to new style. I'm going to now edit my splits, hit edit. I'm going to say, I wrote 50%. Maisie wrote 50%. I'm going to save those splits. There's a couple of cool things that just happened. The first cool thing that just happened is Maisie gets notified that Justin Gray has added her as a collaborator to New Style. The second cool thing that happens is if she decides that she wants to instantiate a profile, meaning create her Maisie Ollinger profile, this song will already show up and be there. Uh, or she doesn't have to do a profile. You could still track all of your collaborators in your splits, even if they don't uh, get, uh, get actually create a profile for themselves. And any activity that you do, if you pitch the song, they'll get notified of that activity as well. So where this is actually of a benefit for you to add any of your collaborators is that even if they're not on video and you have an opportunity to license that song, you can still give up, You, you not give up is not the right word, you can still expose their contact information to whoever wants to license the song. So it actually simplifies the process of music licensing down the line. But I want to go back here. Uh, so everywhere where you see a blue dot is where you can effectively change any information. And we're going to keep going through this anywhere that's blue. Um, so I want to go add track metadata. We talked about that earlier. This is the digital information that's embedded into the actual audio file itself. So who is the name of the artist? We're going to call this Maisie and Justin. Who does it sound like or it's similar to? Well, it kind of sounds a little bit like Fantagram. Uh, it sounds a little bit like uh, like uh, um, Cinema, right? So I'm going to say that. Um, I want to rate the song a 5 out of 10 because I think everything uh, – sorry, 5 out of 5 because I think everything I do is a 5 out of 5. So does my mom and so do my kids. My wife is a little bit of a, of a tougher critic, but whatever. She's not a songwriter. Uh, you can enter a BPM. All of these become relevant and searchable terms. But here's where it's really important. Now is where you add your metadata tags. So I know, for example, this song is up-tempo. 
I know this song is female. And we have, by the way, probably 180 metadata tags, I think, at this point. I know the song is pop. I know that the song is quirky. I know that this song is alternative. Uh, I know that this song is uh, edgy. I know that this song is fun. Uh, whatever, you get the point, right? You can kind of enter everything that you need to do uh, in terms of uh, creating metadata, and then you keep going down. I want to add my publisher. Now, what a lot of people don't realize is that you are your own publisher, even if you don't have, quote, unquote, a publishing deal. You actually publish yourself. So if you're not registered with your performance rights organization like ASCAP, BMI, CSAC, we actually have direct registrations here in Medio for SOCAN if you wanted to join. Um, you become your own publisher. So you can and you could say ABC Music or whatever your name is. That's your publishing company. Um, you can add any additional publishers. You can assign it to your PRO. In my case, it's BMI, but you can see we have PROs from all over the world uh, that are embedded as well. Uh, you can create public track. Now, I want to come back and talk to, about this in a moment. Public track is how you get discovered on our compatible product, Hyper Audio. So you heard me say that we're going to talk about that, and we will talk about that. Um, so if you want your music to be licensed, you have to click public track. Uh, what you're looking at here, by the way, everybody, is a uh, the current version of uh, this media platform. We're actually going to be doing a rebuild. So you guys getting in now is actually a really good time to start uploading music uh, because it gets analyzed. And when we start launching Hyper Audio and Media Plus, um, you're going to be sort of on the front end of that. Uh, anyway, I'm going to come back to that. Uh, you apply a catalog. So I know that this goes into my 72 songs catalog, and I'll show you how we build that again. Uh, that might not be a, a, a today function for some of you, but if there's other songwriters here or, or creatives that have maybe multiple uh, catalogs of songs with different publishers, this is a great tool. If you're just independent, you probably will never use it. Um, you can enter certain terms of use uh, and how you want to make sure that your song is used. Let's say I, I, I don't want my music to be affiliated with political parties. Uh, whatever, perhaps that's you know that's usually a big uh, a big term of use. Um, or you could say. Uh, all music has to be, um, uh, please, con it could be contact information, it could be any number of things. Uh, the, co the copyright date is automatically embedded. You can change that. Here is where you put in anything like master info label. So we know that the, that the artist is uh, uh, Maisie, Maisie XJ Gray. Uh, we know that the lyrics were done by Maisie. Uh, I'm going to write this in. Ugh, sorry. Typing in front of people is very, very, very stressful. Uh, any additional info. You can see here my IPI, my writer number is already embedded. I'm going to show you how we do that. Does it contain a sample? No, it does not. Uh, is it registered with my PRO? Not yet. I'm going to leave that box blank. Save. You're going to see all of this information now changes here, right? You can see now this metadata. Now it says if I want to find something in my data, in my music that sounds like Fantagram or Cinema, this song will be discovered. If I want to find anything that's pop, up-tempo, female, quirky, edgy, alternative, I can discover that. Again, just really easy ways to go and, and find that music quickly, whether you have 10 songs or whether you have 1,000 songs. I want to show you something here that's really cool. This was, this number didn't exist. This is actually part of the AI, and we're going to come back to that. As I said, every song is embedded with 10,000 different data points. Now, that goes from things like tempo, genre, gender of the singer, uh, um, uh, the, 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 the EQ of the song, uh, the energy, the emotion, the dynamics, all of these things are used and they, and they become leverageable against each other. But what that means is, going back to, again, the hyper audio conversation, let's say somebody were to want to find something that sounds like pop, up-tempo, quirky, female, and alternative, right? And they find this song. They go, oh, we love that song. We want 10 more kind of like that. They can click a... a, a a, a tool that we have in, in Hyper Audio, which I'll show you later, <clears throat> called Smart Playlists, which actually leverage these songs off of each other. It's really, really cool. And this is a great way to get discovered off of somebody else's discovery. In other words, <clears throat> if somebody has a song that is similar to this, um, they would get discovered when someone wants to find songs similar to this, if that makes sense. But what I want to show you that's really cool is I'm going to play this really fast. So I don't know if you may or may not be able to hear this, it's just like a little clanky percussion. But I want you to watch this number when I move down this when I move down the track. So right now you can see it's kind of melancholic, seems happy, uplifting, calm. I'm gonna to go to the end of the song here. Watch what happens. Those numbers have changed, right? This this song is now more energetic. It is not tense, it's not really melancholic, 
it's pretty it's not really relaxed it's happy it's not really dark you know so actually we have a second by second mood and and, and emotion analysis att attached to every song this is really important because you can actually point people into it to points moments in time when the song does a certain does a certain thing you can help create points of interest a lot of times it's great for music supervisors because they'll want to know that they are they can use the song when it peaks the most so it actually just it's a little bit of a tool set that allows people to really um, um, identify the key moments in a song um, you know again I'll go back here there's that number of changes not tense the song is pretty linear actually so it's actually doing quite a good job of analyzing these things on the way in so that's how we've kind of set up a song. You can do a couple of other cool things. You can actually add additional versions. So if I wanted to say, I'm going to open up, uh, go back to new style here. Uh, I'm going to, I want to say, I'm going to upload the new style instrumental, right? Open. Now I'm uploading new style instrumental. So again, for a lot of professionals, uh, it's a great way to store all of your different versions and iterations. Again, because you guys are Medio and also Medio Plus and also Hyper Audio, you guys can actually store high resolution WAV files. So it's not just MP3s. Um, that's really crucial, especially when you want to make your music available for licensing. Uh, you want to have WAV files or high resolution audio files available as quickly as possible. Um, sorry, oops. Uh, we want to you want to make sure that all those parts are quickly are available as quickly as possible. Also, as you're exporting music, in a, some of you may know this. Uh, if there was some visual feedback, I'd see heads nodding. I hope, but as you are uh, exporting your music, so mixes are done and complete. Make sure that you have the full version. Make sure that you have a clean version in case there's any profanity. Make sure that you have a, tele, a TV version, which is usually uh, an instrumental plus any non-lyric uh, vocals. Uh, and then you have an, a t an instrumental, which is literally just an instrumental. It's important to have all of those information. And sometimes, actually, I would even suggest an acapella. Uh, again, just as a, a note, when music editors are cutting together songs, they want to have ultimate flexibility. They want to say, oh, I, you know, I want this lyric, but I want it over to over this broken down, uh, um, you know, version of of where the track is. So, you know, you want to be able to make your, your productions as modular as you can so that music editors can use those and license it so that they can license those songs because they can use those parts sort of, you know, in combination with each other. I hope that makes sense. And I hope people are doing that. Uh, and, and acknowledging it. Uh, so that so that so that's kind of very simply how you upload a song, how you add that metadata information. Uh, and, and and here, I'm going to add, just because I know that he's on, on the platform, I'm going to add James Best, um, as uh, who works with us. He's a songwriter too. He's not, but I just added him. So if he's already on the platform, you don't have to go and invite him every time. Uh, that's what's important. Um, James now, when he logs into his video profile, will see that the song New Style has been added to his library. So again, what's cool is if I add it to a playlist and pitch it, if James adds it to a playlist or Maisie pitches it, we all get notified. It's a great way to keep in tune with the activity of your music. Um, if you don't collaborate, I suggest that you do. Um, and that's actually something that we're doing here uh, as we move forward with uh, our Medio Plus launch. Um, we are doing things like uh global songwriting camps uh virtual obviously it's virtual virtual songwriting camps where uh, you as a video plus member can can uh can um apply not i shouldn't say apply can register more like uh to join us on our songwriting camps we connect you with other collaborators uh, around the world and you have virtual songwriting camps and you and you and you write songs together and collaborate of course, the goal is to do it with um, with briefs in mind from our music supervisor community. That's a, that's that's a big part of what we're doing. Uh, and then those songs get written, they get uploaded to Medio, uh, and um, because you're a part of Medio Plus, they can then get discovered and licensed through Hyper Audio. Um, so that's good. I'm I'm going to pause for a moment here, just in case we have any questions. Um, James, if you wanted to pop in here real quick, and and uh, maybe there's some questions that are 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 happening, or um, or are we good to continue? Uh, yeah, we have. Um, uh, can you hear me, guys? Yeah. Yeah, I got you. Have, yeah, so we have uh, a question from Ari here um, asking, you know, if you do click uh, this is a public track, will it allow your song to be licensed? So the answer is yes. So what you're going to see uh, moving forward is a public track is going to be um, probably rebranded as as push to hyper audio. Uh, and what that does is that, and what, if, if it's, if it is not checked, we'll do it again. Um, so I'm going to add this metadata here, right? Um, if you go down and click public track, uh, where did it go? Here it is. Uh, that makes the song available for licensing, um, through hyper audio. 
if it is not public, what that means is it will not be discovered if a music supervisor goes to Hyper Audio and says they need to find something that sounds like whatever. Um, so if, 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 if somebody is looking for and by the way, Hyper Audio works in a couple ways. It says, I want to find something that sounds like that sounds like something. So I want to find something that sounds like Sabotage by the Beastie Boys. Or they can also say, I want to find something that sounds like edgy rock hip hop. Right. It's it's going to it's going to it's going to know to connect, hopefully, your song to a pre-existing pre-released piece of music. So but unless that public track box is not ticked, uh, it won't be discovered uh, and it won't be licensable. Uh, and again, I wanted to talk to you because uh, I want to say one really quick thing about how that works. We are not your publishers. We do not own your music. We do not we do not uh, we 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 are non-exclusive means that you can work with anybody that you want. We only help on whatever you allow us to help you help you with. So that's really important to know. We don't own anything. And I think we should also at some point go through a whole thing on music licensing and how that works, because I want to give you a very quick blast on it. If you license your song to, uh, I don't know, a car commercial, to a, a, a Honda Civic commercial, you can, you can license that song tomorrow to uh, a, a, a a brand or a, you know, you can license that song tomorrow to Apple and you can license that song the next day to, uh, you know, I don't know, Ralph's supermarkets. You, because you own those songs, you can actually license those songs over and over and over and over and over again. You're not giving away those rights and we don't represent you exclusively. So you can pull this music on and off. So to answer your question, if you decide today you want this song to be available on Media Plus and on Hyper Audio, click public. If tomorrow you're like, man, I don't want that. You just go back, open that song, untick that box. It's no longer discoverable. Um, again, I just think that that's an important question. As I as I set up this metadata, uh, why don't you ask another question? Uh, if the, if we have any more, James. Yeah. So we had one uh, previously from uh, Jamila asking uh, about uh, the registration with pros, um, and I quickly yep. responded that that is correct within the platform. You can register your music with pros, such as SoCan. Correct. Yeah, and uh, just so that people, some people understand, PRO stands for Performance Rights Organizations. So uh, how they work, they collect anything that is a that is a public performance. Uh, they'll collect for Spotify. They'll collect for any DSPs like Spotify, YouTube, Pandora, uh, whatever, whatever. Um, they'll also collect from any radio performances. They do collect uh, from uh, um, you know even believe it or not, things like jukeboxes are still actually uh, relevant in how they collect. Um, so if you're not registered with a PRO, please get yourself registered. That's very, very important to the prof to professionalizing what you do. Uh, if you if you not if you're not, I'm going to show you how to register with SoCan. There are there are partners. They're based in Canada, but they're actually probably one of the world's well, they're one of the world's probably three largest performance rights organizations, and they're fantastic. Um, I'm going to just continue. I'll, I'll close this out. We'll, we'll we'll continue this. You guys have already seen this anyway, so I'm just going to save that. Um, Registering with the PR. Do we have any other questions or let's talk about the PR registration because it's really simple. There's a lot of stuff that's hidden in here. Uh, if I open up tracks and I go down to PRO, right, anything that's that's associated to my songs, uh, I go to SoCan, I go to register, boom. Now, we also, just so that you know, have a bunch of help videos. So these are gonna, these are gonna continue to grow and expand. So if there's ever anything that's confusing you, uh, we can go, there's some basic help videos here. Uh, that, that you can jump onto. We're going to keep adding to these, but I want to go back to uh, the PRO point. Uh, if you wanted to, you just go here, SoCan registration, you enter your name, you enter your relevant information, uh, you create a password, blah, 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 blah. I don't need to because I'm actually already registered with SoCan. Um, how did you hear of video? Whatever, you can fill that out or not. Uh, and then when you go submit, you're actually going to submit and you, want, you are now registered to SoCan as a, as a songwriter, you will get an IPI number and which is the, which is basically your identification number as a songwriter. Um, in fact, uh, one thing that I think that you should probably do when you come in is go to the helps and go to how to set up your profile. We'll do that real quick here. You're going to see this pay this this little button. This is basically your um, how you get to your profile settings and then you enter your information. You can go through all of this stuff and you can see um, but what we're going to do is I'm going to show you this. You enter your basic information, a basic tagline, just trying to make hits. That's what I'm trying to do is make hits. Um, enter your bio. This is really, really important because in your bio, that, that gets 
attached to every time you pitch a song. So I'm going to, I'm going to just, uh, I'm going to pick up a name here of somebody. So uh, forgive me here. I'm going to look at, uh, uh, I see uh, Ada DeMoya. I hope I, I hope I got that right. Um, so if, if Ada, if you're pitching a song uh, and someone goes, oh, I don't know who this person is, you want them to be able to read a bio and see who you are and connect with you. That's why it's important to enter your email address, a phone number, uh, your publisher, your PRO, hopefully so can or somebody else, um, your PRO member ID. That's something that once you um, once you affiliate with a with a PRO, you will uh, get that member ID, and then you have your IPI number. These are this is the special number that is attached to every song that you write, so they know that you're that I'm the Justin Gray that needs to get paid here. Uh, any other basic information, save. Um, I wanted to show you a couple other things, uh, things like billing information, things like social logins, uh, things like cloud storage accounts. Again, if you have, uh, if you if you keep your music on any of these, you can connect via via those, and you can actually pull your music in and interface directly that way. Cloud sync manage notifications. This is actually really important. When you create your profile, everybody's notifications are automatically all checked on. Um, I hope that you are so busy that this become that your notifications become incredibly annoying. Uh, but what I suggest doing is one of the first things you do is go and manage your notifications, turn things on or off uh, as required. Um, and uh, they're all pretty self-explanatory. I don't think it's it's too it's too uh, problematic. Of course, change password and remove account. So that's kind of the basic overall. I want to show you a couple of cool things. Um, so I want to go backwards here for a moment. Here's our list of songs that we that we um, built, right? I want to go back to this. You can see it's still over here. It's still populated. Even though we've done all of this work on video, it's still populated. I want to say, uh, hey, these are my uh, edgy rock uh, music. And I'm going to date it 331. No, today's 41, isn't it? Ooh, 4121. Now, I can do a few things. I can email it, and that's when you pitch it. So I'm going to email it to uh, James. Uh, um, uh, we're, we're, we're gonna, I'm going to just for now, I'm going to send it to jbest at midio.com. So there's a couple things. I can email him, send him this playlist. He's going to get that. And and, and two things are going to happen. One is going to say, thanks for your help, whatever. So I'm going to, first I'm going to create a playlist. Create playlist. You're going to see in the bottom, playlist added. But now I'm going to share, I'm going to share that. I'm going to share this music. Click share. The pitch tracks page unpopulates. It's ready to go for another for another pitch. But I want to show you a couple of cool things that we just did here. When I go to playlists again, we created the edgy rock music playlist for 121. Right? There's four songs. But let's say I go, you know, I want to I want to make sure that people hear "Walk Like Me" first. That's the first song, and I want to make sure that they hear "Drop Dead" last. In fact, I want "Street Lights" to be second. So you could just drag and move songs as you need to within the playlist itself. But then I want to show you a couple other cool things that we do with playlists. A, you can enter an image if you want, and you can kind of brand it, so it can be whatever. By the way, you can do that with all the songs as well. Uh, so each song can have album art or whatever you need to do. When I share this playlist, <clears throat> I enter an email. Jbest, oops, J, uh, James, let's just change it to Jbeast. That's even better. I did it again. Jbest at Midio.com. So I've now shared this. When I click the share button, right, he's gonna get a notification, but what's cool is he actually gets a live link. What that means is if I were to, let's say now, I'm just gonna, I want to, uh, I'm just gonna say add this track, whatever. I'm just I'm just randomly pulling something. If I wanna update a track, because he is now, that playlist has been shared with him, every time I update that track, he gets notified, hey, a new song has been added. This is really important to keeping your, Create uh, relationship, your creative relationships engaged in what you're doing. So if you, let's say, have awesome summer 2020, 2021 songs, and you keep updating that playlist, the people that are that are subscribed to that playlist will then get updates as well. Or you can just copy and share that URL, put it in your Facebook page, put it in, your, you know, again, put it in an email, use it in the way that you would use like Dropbox or something like that. Um, I want to show you something really cool. Here's mood comparisons. So uh, it's funny. I just put that song "Wake Up" in, uh, which has nothing to do with "Best Day Ever." As you can see, "Best Day Ever" and "Wake Up" are completely misaligned. They are not the same song. What that means is, for hyper audio and how music gets leveraged, if I were to say "Loving Best Day Ever" 
and I said, I want more songs like this, we would not find the song Wake Up. Just that, that that's kind of how it works. I'm going to open up my edgy rock stuff playlist here. Let's open up. Uh, these ones are, how about uh, retro stuff? There you go. Here's a song that's got more, um, more songs in it. Here is where the analysis is really important. <clears throat> Every song through these date through these 10,000 um, data points within each song that's uploaded and analyzed, it creates a histogram. And that's how we can judge and correlate one song to each other. So that's where the AI is so important. Because if I were to say to you, hey, um, I want songs that sound like good, good vibes, my brain would not necessarily go to Bone Shaker or Sleep or Best Day Ever. So it's a great way for us to help use AI as a tool to discover and build playlists of similar and like-minded songs. Um, where this really works and is super important is on Hyper Audio, if someone goes and were to discover, let's say the song, Ready, Set, Let's Go, if they were to discover that song, they, we would want them to be able to leverage that to discover more songs like it. That's ultimately how we create more, more revenue, more opportunities for licensing, uh, and, uh, and all of those. So all of this stuff needs to all happen. Um, I wanted to show you a couple other cool things as we're going through. As you guys can see, I just pitched Edgy Rock Music 4121 to James Best at Midio. Uh, he has not opened that, that search yet. He's not opened that pitch rather yet. So, uh, so James, it's been nice knowing you. You're now officially fired from Midio, so you won't be seeing James at the next one because he's not opened the playlist I sent four minutes ago. Of course, I'm joking. Uh, but what it is is actually it's a way to track your activity of your music. So I could see, for example, I sent Swagger Hip Hop to Ryan at Seeker two months ago. I could see that he opened it. I could see that Brandon Burkholder did not open it, right? I could see that Rosalind McPhail did not open it. So it's a great way to track the activity of, you know, I don't know if you guys, again, sometimes it's very frustrating as a professional songwriter to send some music to somebody and be like, uh, did you listen? Did they, I don't know, did they download it? I have no idea. This is actually a great way to get some insight on how that act on, on whether or not um, they're opening and listening to your music. And of course, if they're not, you know, and if they are and they didn't get back to you, you also probably know. But if they're not, you can also reach back out and say, hey, James, just wondering if you got a chance to check out my edgy rock music playlist that I sent you. Um, it's just a great way to track your activity. Um, speaking of tracking your activity, one of the member benefits of Midio Plus as we move forward is going to be a monthly email that is going to be called Tractivity that's actually going to give you a real under the hood look at the activity of your music. Meaning, I wanna know which of my songs were most discovered, which of my songs were most uh, most most playlisted, most licensed, which of, which of them were, were most actively um, um, shared, right? You wanna get that, act, you wanna get all of that activity around your music to understand what's working. Uh, also, you're gonna understand based on the data that we're collecting, what are the most searched trends? For example, some of you may or may not know or realize this, that, well, basically starting in early June, Christmas music is about to be the most licensed uh, music style, right? So you may not know that, you may know that, but the idea is to give you the tools to say, hey, you know, again, I'm gonna, let, me go, let me go pick up a random name here. Uh, uh, hey, uh, um, where are my participants at? Uh, hey, uh, hey, uh, 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 Janine, uh, you know, Chris, Christmas is around the corner. I know it's May. If you haven't, start uploading or writing music for Christmas because starting in June, we're going to see a 86% spike in, in not only searches for Christmas music, but it needs to be, let's say, Christmas, female, quirky, up-tempo, uh, whatever. I'm, I'm just making up these, genre, these genres. Um, and so if you write more songs like that, you will stand a better chance of having your music licensed over the next couple of months. And by the way, the great thing about Christmas music, just on a total side note, is it just comes back every year, every year. And every year those songs are, I mean, I have songs that I wrote 10 years ago that are being licensed for Christmas still. So it's a very, very uh, repeatable, licensable genre of music. So all of that is part of the tractivity component that you're gonna get as well. Uh, as part of a Midio Plus membership. Um, we're also doing things while I'm on here. We're launching a little program within Midio and Midio Plus called Midio U, which is going to be a one weekly, uh, sorry, a monthly weekend where we have very, very high level 
uh, webinars all, all focused into a couple of days. So we might talk about music publishing, music licensing, how to make your music better. We'll bring on recording engineers. Uh, we have people that are talking about how to, how to independently market yourself as an artist. Uh, maybe your issue is how do I find more collaborators to work with, right? There's, there's so many different variables. All of these things are going to be part of our Midio U series. You only get that as a Midio Plus member. Uh, I want to go through a couple of other very high level things. I think we'll take a couple more questions. This is a really important um, part of our of our of our platform. It doesn't look great. It's going to look better uh, as we move forward. But this is how we want to add people to your network. You know, again, when I look at my career and how I've managed to create <clears throat> um, my successful moments, it's all through relationships that I've built over the years and years and years and years. So what we want to do is trying to re recreate that here in this platform. So let's say um, uh, I just added, uh, I, I, well, I see James here. Let's say I wanted to uh, find, um, uh, well, let's add Kent. I know Kent is somebody that we, uh, uh, yeah, let's add, uh, I've add, let's add Kent Bell to my network. I'm going to add him to my network. Click. I'm going to send that confirmation. What this allows me to know is, 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 is not only communicate with Kent, but actually collaborate with Kent all on video. Very, very cool, very fun, uh, very good way to find out. But let's say you go, uh, I'm, I'm going to find, um, again, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pick a name here. Uh, I want to find, uh, I see a uh, Carrie Keys, right? I'm going to go look for Carrie Keys. Now, because Carrie's a friend, I'm going to go and, and, and f search for her. Um, I don't see Carrie Keys. So if I want, I can invite that new user. I can, and they can come and join me in my network and they'll get a notification. Uh, it's really cool. Or maybe there's other collaborators that you meet and that you work with. Uh, they're not part of your network. You want to do that. So we have uh, three different sets of, four really. My team. So if you have a manager, if you have uh, an agent, if you have maybe a lawyer, if you have a publisher, perhaps, they, you would add them to your team. Uh, they can go in and search for music, pitch for you on your behalf. They can affect any sort of um, any of your, your 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 splits or any of your sort of like administrative purposes. Um, here are different music publishers that have an interest in my songs. Uh, here are people in my network, and finally, here are all the way down on the list. And we're going to make get better at this. Here is my list of collaborators. These are all people that I've written songs with. So it's tracking my 286 collaborators uh, on platform. Uh, let's go through one more sort of key point, and then uh, we'll continue taking some questions. So we have this whole section here called projects. Right now it's pretty quiet. I don't think you're gonna to see too much in there. Uh, but we have two strategies. One is, as I mentioned, if you publish your music to Hyper Audio, uh, we are not your publisher, uh, that music is pulled. What that means is that a music supervisor, and we have, by the way, we have 1500 music supervisors that we interface with that are, are at any point getting, going to get emails on cool new playlists that we're launching through, um, through Hyper Audio, cool new artists that we that, that are now part of Hyper Audio. We allow them to subscribe to you. So let's say Carrie, I'm gonna use Carrie Keys again. Let's say Carrie Keys, someone goes, I love I love that. I love everything about, about her project. The idea is I can sub subscribe to Carrie. So every time Carrie uploads a new song, I wanna get notified so I can license that song. That's a pull mentality. We also have built into Midio our projects, which is a push mentality. This is where you're going to see typically higher value projects, stuff that is more in the, uh, you know, maybe let's say $10,000 plus range for licensing, where we would, uh, you would see them posted. For example, here was um, a replacement for fits in the tantrums, right? So actually, let me go backwards here for a moment. You click on a project. It opens up that project. You click on this button. Remember I said anywhere where you sort of have this purpley blue, you click that button. You can go back to your to your songs. You can say, well, I'm going to, and you can search them exactly the same way that you always have. But you can say, I want to add this song. I'm going to add that song. I'm just, I'm just picking these off. And I'm going to say, okay, uh, I'm going to add them. That's fine. Uh, I'm going to add them to my pitch for this project. So this is when you now go and start submitting. On the other end, you have music supervisors that are getting notifica notif notific notificated. Not notified uh, that a new song has been added and dumped into their project bucket. So they go and listen to it and they can go and license those songs. Um, I want to show you something else cool that you can do within projects. You can actually create your own projects. So here's a project that I created, um, producer looking for artists. I put up my project tags. 
I put up a basic description and I'll show you how to do this because you can actually do this for if you wanted to find collaborators or producers or top lines or whatever. I posted this project. Here's all of the people that submitted to me for this project and all of their songs that they submitted. I can go and connect and send them a message right away, right? Uh, or I did find, which I thought was incredible, this artist named Kiki Halliday. Uh, we actually, she actually just got a publishing deal from being on Midio. Um, so there is tremendous amounts of opportunities to get discovered, not only in film and TV and licensing, but also in, 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 in collaborating in maybe publishing deals. There's a lot of really cool things. Uh, and of course I can look at it from, these are the different pitches, but I can also look at it as, uh, here's all the different songs that I received. And of course I can go download. So, so it's a, it's a really cool tool to create your own project. Again, really, really easy to do. You literally go create project, you follow the rules, one of the things that you should know is when you create a project, if you create a project public, custom, or external, a public project is a project that goes out to our whole base of video users. So we have about 5,000 right now. So unless you want to get inundated with notifications, you might want to choose to create a custom project, which means only inviting to people that are within your network. Um, or an external client means you can invite people to, to collaborate on projects, even if they're not on video. Um, but as a public post, it's also fun to see who's out there and, and build new relationships. Again, you go in, you fill out different data, you know, whatever you need, and you click save. You guys can all go through and do that and look at it together um, or individually later on. So that's the basic overview of Midio. James, do we have any sort of quick questions? I know I'm just scan scanning a bunch of it and we can get deeper into it. In fact, I'll show you something really quick before we get to the questions. Um, I wanted to show you this. There are here some of the notifications and messages. So um, I don't have any recent messages, but I do have three notifications, right? I have Jeff Pittman added tweaks on I'm on top. I have Eugenio Taiko has created a new public project umbrella and Charles Honeywood has accepted my network request. Great. I can go there and I can see awesome. I'm going to close that. I'm going to go look, but you know what? I want to go and look at this project. So I'm going to click that, right? It's going to take me to this project. It's going to, it's going to, uh, I'm a, it's going to take me to the project and I'm going to see, okay, what is the project that they're looking for? Pop, electro, dance, music popped, right? Um, this So this is actually somebody that's looking for a song. And they've updated this. So if I wanted to pitch that project, I can go back to my pitch button. I could say, well, I want to go uh, electro and dance. I want to see if I have anything that matches that. Um, oh, yeah, I do. I'm going to go boom, boom, and uh, boom. Okay, right? Project has been, that's fine. I've just now submitted that song, those three songs to that project, right? So perfect. Uh, anyway, I don't know if there's questions. I wanted to show you that. Uh, we can go through all of this stuff again uh, in more, more deeply, but James, any other sort of questions that we have? Yeah, so we currently have three. Uh, okay. The first one's from Charles here, um, and they're asking, uh, what are the current sync licensing rates? That's a great question. So uh, let me tell you a little bit about that. It's all different. There is a sort of, there's not really a rate card per se. How it's gonna work in uh, in Hyper Audio is we have, uh, we're in the middle of finalizing five um, licensing partners. Uh, I'm not gonna mention them, but five major heavy using licensing partners that are gonna probably combine needing to do, you know, 10,000 licenses and clearances over the course of each year. Um, how we work in Hyper Audio is we pre-clear the value of those licenses. So, for example, if um, user want, if, if a licensor wants to, let's say, use a 30-second instrumental for a one-time use sports pack highlight reel, they might pay $250 for that license. If they say, well, we want to have a 13-week promo for our network, uh, that's going to be all media, which means television, movie theaters, if those ever come back online, internet, whatever, right? That might be closer to 20,000. So there's a bit of a, a, a bit of a ranging scale depending on the, the, the length of time, the usage, whether it's an instrumental, whether it is um, uh, 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 in the forefront or whether it's in the background. And all of that is predetermined in our licensing agreements, which you guys will all have access to seeing. So you'll know if your song is being licensed by you know, I'm, I'm going to make this NBC, right? That you're going to know, you're going to know that the value of that license is consistent with what has been pre-negotiated on your behalf. So the good news is we also are a tool to ensure that license. 
So what that means is if NBC wants to come in and license your song, we protect that transaction. We make sure that not only you get paid, but also they're getting the assets that they need in order to edit their, ed edit their picture. So they, we wanna make sure that they're getting, like I said to you guys earlier, um, high resolution WAV files, right? We wanna make sure that they have instrumentals and all of the parts they need because people will lose licenses if they don't have that stuff. Now, to go back, every partner licensing partner that we have is gonna have a little bit of a different rate. For example, NBC would be a massive usage, right? But let's say, um, you know, KTLA, right, which is a small local station here in LA, they might not have, you know, they might pay $50 to license a song for a one-time sports highlight reel, right? Where NBC or ESPN, because that's national, might would pay more. So there's a sliding scale on the value of a license. I, I know that that didn't precisely answer, but I guess if I was going to really be super concise, this ranges of scales that we're looking to do are anywhere from gratis licenses, which means free, up to $10,000. Again, reminder, you own those songs. Nobody owns those songs. You are the owner of those songs. We are not the owners of those songs. We are not your publisher. We are only transact on what we only earn from what we transact. So if anybody has experience with, with sync agents, you'll know that sync agents take at minimum 35 up to 50% of any of the income derived from a transaction, including any performance ro royalties that could be earned. We take zero performance royalties and we only take 20% of that transaction, which also includes the actual facilitating the license. So it's not even just finding the opportunity, but it's actually facilitating the license, legally speaking. Um, so that's quite a bit. Now, if, if you do a, a, a license for $10, we take $2, you keep eight. But if you go and make $1,000 in performance royalties, by the way, which is why you need to be registered with the PRO, you get all of that. We get none of that. That is, We don't own any of that revenue. That's all yours. So we want. I'm a songwriter. I'm a producer. I wanted to try and create an environment that was as, as friendly as possible to other creators. Um, I hope that answers your question. Uh, James. James. Hey, hey sorry, Justin. Um, yes, we have a question here from Ada and okay. they're asking uh, when you do pitch your tracks um, do you can you email them out to a contact that you already have or is there a way to uh, find people and businesses to share them with that's a great question we the answer is both um, our goal is to create meaningful connections between songwriters and music supervisors or let, let, let's see, let's just be super TED talky our goal is to create meaningful relationships between suppliers, which is you guys who write the songs and create the music and demanders, people that want to license those songs. <clears throat> so that is a part of it. Right now, the pitch, pitching tracks is, is pretty much exclusively to your community of people. But again, the goal is, you know, Ada, the goal is somebody goes and finds your song, goes, oh, I love her. She's amazing. Okay, I want to add, I want to add her to my, you know, my network of people. They can, you know, so for music, if you're pitching a song out to a project that's on video or a project that you get discovered through hyper audio, the whole goal is for them to find you, for you to find them, for you guys to connect meaningfully. Um, so if your music's great, that's probably going to happen a lot. If your music isn't as good as it needs to be, that might not happen as frequently, but that's part of where some of our other benefits of things like Midio Plus and Midio U come in is to be able to, how do I get better? How do I, you know, we did a webinar about uh, six months ago uh, called Why Does My Song Sound So Shit? And we had Tony Maserati and Brian Maloof, two expert level music mixers uh, who are friends of mine coming in and just literally giving creative thoughts on how to make your music better. Talking about boring things like what's on your master bus? What's in your vocal chain, right? Why, why, doesn't my, why don't my drums punch as hard as, you know, whatever, name whatever song you like. So we're, there's a lot of education to get you better on that level um, as well. I know I kind of veered off the veered off the road there, but the whole idea was yes, the idea is to help create meaningful cr relationships between people on the supply side and people on the demand side, and that's going to evolve as we as we grow. Perfect. And then we have uh, one final question from Jamila, but I do believe that you actually answered it. Um, which was well, let's go back over it. So if if I didn't, um, and then uh, yeah, what, what what's the question? Yeah, um, so it was, uh, are payments for licenses all handled inside the platform um, or is there any form of protection? And then a follow-up question um, that, what is the preference for the audio format, whether it be a .wave uh, or .mp3? 
Great question. Two, two great questions. So the first question is, yeah, we, we, we facilitate the transaction on your behalf, so you don't actually have to worry about that. Um, all you need to worry about is make sure that your IPI number, so your, your, the number that registers at you at your PRO is correct, and that the splits are correct, because when a song gets licensed, they have to put those into cue sheets, and that's how you get your royalties. Um, but yes, we collect that, we collect that revenue on your behalf, uh, and then we pay through also directly to you. So you got to make sure that like, you know, your payment information is, is correct and accurate to, to answer your second question on Midio, uh, you can only upload MP3s as a Midio plus member, which is what you guys are going to be. Yes. You would also be able to upload waves. So, uh, for now you would upload a wave we would convert it into an MP3. So what people discover, when, when people are on Hyper Audio looking for music, they're actually listening to MP3s. Uh, it's just easier and faster. It's, 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 a, it's, a, it's more um, stable as a sort of to, to, for playback, for quick playback and streaming. But when they license it, they get the wave version. So, so actually the answer is both, but you can just, when you get started, you can actually just get started by uploading waves uh, and not having to um, uh, do both and do it a second time. Any other questions, James? Uh, nope, that is everything currently. But yeah, if you guys have any other questions, fire them in the chat. Um, we'd love to hear from you. Yeah, and I'm again, I'm going to um, I'm going to put in my email address again, uh, and at video.com. I'm going to put in jbest at video.com. Sorry, James. Uh, and uh, you know, oh, that's not right. Sorry, jbest. Fat fingers video.com um, hit us anytime if you need anything uh, this has been a great treat I'm hoping the next time I'll be able to see your faces that will be a, a, a huge help uh, for me personally but um, I just wanted to again thank uh, I want to thank Ada Ari uh, Becky Charles uh, Gil Jamila Janine Jen Josh Lara Lara uh, Nisha Pauline Sarah and Sergio um, uh, the email didn't show up in the chat for attendees. Well, let me give it to you real quick. It's J, the letter J, G-R-A-Y. Oh, I can see you're right. It did not. Thank you very much, Jamila. You are absolutely right. Here it is, jgray at midio.com. I'm glad that uh, I'm the chairman of a tech company. Uh, jbest at midio.com. Uh, hit us anytime. Uh, guys, this has been a real treat. Uh, James, I want to thank you so much uh, for, for, uh, for, 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 for facilitating this. I'm very excited about this partnership uh, with you guys. Um, please, you know, bring your friends. Uh, and uh, I'm, you know, always here at the other end of this line, Sarah Martinico, who works with us. Uh, thank you very much, Sarah, uh, for putting this all together. And uh, I wanted to just uh, thank you all personally. And if you could, if I can't see you, but I'm, thumbs upping you and um hit me anytime anything else you think james you think we're good is there a special link we can sign up to uh yes um why don't you uh, connect with james i would say this you guys uh let's do this real quick uh really really super duper fast um so that you can see this um when you go to video and you go to login and you go to sign up Oops, let me let me let me log out because that will make things a lot better. Um, when you go to log in, you're going to see log into your account. By the way, this is all going to improve. So um, if you have any creative thoughts, please email us anything things that you think we could do better or create your free account here. Once you create your free account, we will make sure that it is fully uh, ready to go for Midio and Midio Plus. So you're going to start seeing emails, um, things with activities that you can sign up and register for, uh, and um, and uh, yeah, let's. Uh, that that's kind of how you do it. Just get started. Boom. Enter your email. Go. You're done. Uh, <clears throat> and uh, I think that was about it. Um, what else was there? I, I can provide the uh, login uh, or the sign up uh, URL in the chat as well. Perfect. In fact, uh, maybe we'll do just like a a, a backup email with uh, with really easy to log in information. Absolutely. Right. Um, perfect. Uh, was, was it, did we have some, 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 uh, um, some, uh, pulls that, that we built in or, or is that not, or did we not do that? Yeah. Um, if you guys like, we, we can do a, an end of the webinar poll, um, just get an idea of everyone's, uh, background and their different interests, uh, within the music industry. 
Perfect. Um, so uh, I appreciate everybody. Uh, we're not going to end this meeting. So if you guys, if you guys can fill this out, that'd be amazing. This will take us like 10 seconds. Um, you can click out all that apply and then, uh, and then, uh, looking forward to it. Really looking forward to you guys. I'm, I'm, uh, you know, I'm really, look, I'm a songwriter like you. I'm passionate about what we're doing. I'm, I, I, I want to see everybody that's a part of this conversation succeed. And if there's any way that we can help, um, we'd love to do this. There's some other things that we're doing uh, while, while you guys are considering this poll, we're doing things like, um, uh, demo submissions and in and, and feedback again you only get that as a part as a member of Medio plus um you know we're doing things like uh discounts for 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 partner products and services uh we're doing things like song competitions you know these are all things that you're going to start seeing in your inbox and this is part of our little community that we're building so um you know we're excited and if you guys have any ideas would love it would love would love to get some feedback you guys are like hey i got an idea what if we you know what if we had you can make emojis searchable. I mean, I don't know, I'm just making that up. Um, we'd love to hear any of those ideas. Uh, some of our best things have come from people that are our users. So uh, I really want to, we're going to leave this up for a minute. I can see here that James uh, added uh, the login uh, to, to sign up. And um, any other last minute questions, you guys? Because uh, I'm going to turn off my video otherwise. I think we're good. All right, guys, thank you so much. Email me anytime, please. We're all friends now. I would love to hear from you and um, have an incredible rest of the Thursday and an incredible weekend and uh, happy Easter, everybody. Take care.